CataractCoach.com. Flip and chop with more nuclear density. It's a great technique, yes, even for a denser nucleus. Now, I had a video last week showing flip and chop, and there were some comments saying that, oh, the nucleus is just too soft in that case. What if the nucleus, there's more nuclear density? So let me show you a case today with more nuclear density. Again, it's me doing a complete cataract case shown start to finish. You can see we've got some, uh, there are actually toric marks, not just the limbus, those are the cardinal marks, but actually toric marks already in the coronal epithelium, which I'll show you later. So here's some reasonable amount of nuclear density here. I think it's enough of a, a red reflex that we don't really need to put any tripem blue dye in the eye. Let's take a look here. Yeah, just viscoelastic. I think it's enough of a red reflex. Now the key in this, the denser the nucleus, the larger the rexus needs to be. So in this case, don't make a four and a half millimeter rexus. In this case, I really want to make a five to five and a half millimeter rexus. So here's the diamond using it to make a nice incision here. There we go. Beautifully done. Nice tunnel length, slightly larger. It's a 2.0 diamond. So we're going to aim for maybe a 2.2 to 2.3 millimeter incision size. Here comes the rexus. Now again, I want to center it up. I want it to overlap the optic, which is six millimeters. But I don't want it to be too small, so I'm really going to try my best here to tear. And you can kind of barely see the, the lens capsule there, but I think you see it. We're going to tear a rexus here that's about 5.5 millimeters in diameter. So here comes a rexus, and you know my forceps have those marks, which are 2.5 and, and 5 millimeters, respectively, from the tip. So I can judge the rexus size. That looks like it be just about spot on. So I want it to be just slightly larger than 5 millimeters. There it is. I think it's great. Now... Here's the trick for flip and chop. You got to get the nucleus out of the bag. Hydro dissection to the side. Slowly, slowly, slowly get a good fluid wave. And the nucleus, well, there it is. It comes up. And now tilt it around a little bit. Now there's the nucleus. Let's put a little extra aliquot of viscoelastic to protect that central coronal endothelium. There's some dispersive agent. Here comes a phaco probe. Now use an appropriate phaco power. It's a little bit denser nucleus. You need more power. So you got the phaco probe going inside the eye here. And here comes the chopper. And let's buzz into this nucleus and we'll go around it to the other side. And you'll see, let's see the density here. It looks pretty reasonable. There you go. So certainly a patient now with more nuclear density. You can see this technique still works great. So buzz into the first half, the first hemi-nucleus, and you get the chop around and maybe chop off a smaller piece. There we go. And we can aspirate this little piece down. Again, I'm showing the video here in real time, unedited, start to finish. So you can see the whole case. Although the very end, uh, I'll show you all the little tricks that I got here. We're going to put some triamcinol in the EC at the end of the case to help quell inflammation. So now again, taking out the nucleus little by little. Now there's the, the remaining part of the first hemi-nucleus, and you can just bring that up, and it can just be emulsified. Using some phaco power modulations here, usually a burst mode or a pulse mode, wherever you want, variable duty cycle, just to limit the amount of energy going inside the eye. And then now once the first hemi-nucleus is out of the eye, you can buzz in the second hemi-nucleus, let's get that chopper around it again, and you can chop off a small piece or... However you want to do it, just chop, chop, and more chop. Take your time here. And again, well, again, these pieces come down pretty easily. We're not trying to ride the endothelium. So I'm trying to operate basically at the iris plane level. So and the chopper is there to protect the posterior capsule, make sure it doesn't come up. And there we go. We've got the nucleus out. Now time for some cortex removal. Now, while we skip over to the cortex and the IA probe, let me tell you about Retina Rounds, our sister channel. It is really that good. It's so much great material. I promise you're going to learn a lot. You're going to love it. You're going to thank me later saying, you know what? I know I'm just a cataract surgeon like you, but I actually really enjoy the Retina Rounds videos. And I've learned some very useful skills there. Now, back to our case here. Here's the cortex removal. Finally, as we get this hazy cortex out, we get a bit, a bit better of a red reflex here. So nicely done, getting all that cleaned up. And we'll polish the undersurface of that anterior capsular rim as well. So definitely, I encourage you to try the flip and chop technique if you'd like to. It's very efficient. Now, the good part of flip and chop is, go. Well, guess what? We're operating away from the posterior capsule, which is, I think, very helpful here. It's really going to help you, if you're an advanced surgeon, to decrease your you know risks of posterior capsule issues. So again, cleaning this up, that looks pretty good. Let's put some viscoelastic and maybe do a little bit more capsule polishing. And then we'll put the lens in. Now, there's that rexus. What do you think of that rexus size? It looks a little bit big, right? And I bet you it's going to be perfect. Because like, we measure, right? We measure with the forceps. So I'm pretty sure it's going to overlap just beautifully. Here comes our capsule polisher, just to get those extra epithelial cells off the undersurface of the lens capsule. I think this is helpful, just if nothing else, just to reduce the inflammatory load. Why have all these lens proteins here have to be emulsified or broken down in an inflammatory cascade? Why not just aspirate them out now? So there we go. We'll get the lens in the bag, deliver this. Looks like a single piece acrylic toric lens. Get that nicely delivered. There it goes in the capsule bag. You can see the toric marks on the eye well at the haptic optic junction. 
And let's position this inside the caps or bag, get that habit to open up, rotate it around a bit. And there we go. It's looking pretty good. So it looks like this patient has a, with the rule of stigmatism, so it looks like the steep axis is around the 90 degree meridian. And now going inside with the eye probe, we move that viscoelastic and obviously all the little lens epithelial cells that are floating in the viscoelastic, get all that out. Nicely done. Clean this up. Maybe get these last little fragments here of uh, lens materials. And then there you go. Look at the optic overlap. Definitely it overlaps. It still overlaps. I mean, that's about perfect. It's about a five and a half millimeter rex. Let's look at a three, full 360 overlap. Here's where you can spend a little bit of time dialing the IOL to the correct steep axis. Nicely done. Nice and easy. Nudge, nudge, nudge if you need to. And again, see that overlap? It's exactly what we wanted. And again, I've also used this technique for brunescent lenses. You've seen that before too on Cataract Coach. But here you go. Look at that. That's a good looking rexus. Now let's seal up the incisions, call this a day, and we'll put some medicine in the eyes. So we're going to put in at the end of the case, obviously this is just BSS now to seal up or hydrate the corneal incision. We're going to use this BSS now to do an angle sweep, that opposite angles where we tend to trap viscoelastic, make sure there's no more viscoelastic in the angle. You can also position the eye well a little bit more, nudge it one way or the other, get it lined up. You can see there's marks on the corneal epithelium. We want to line those marks up with the marks of the optic um, junction there that have the three dots. And once that's lined up in a pro position, that's just BSS to get a nice deep AC. We'll put some triamcinolone in the eye, about a half milligram of preservative-free triamcinolone. That's going to help quell post of inflammation. Here is a little bit of myostat or carbocol to helping the pupil down. And now finally at the end here, put a little small aliquot of preservative-free moxifloxus and for end off the minus prophylaxis. There you go. And then just check the pressure at the end, make sure that's pretty good. And let's check the incisions too. So we'll check the incisions. Let's get our dry wax cell now. Make sure it's totally sealed up. And that looks beautiful. Very nice case. Thank you for watching. Remember, try this technique and check out Retina Rounds, our sister channel. So much great material. You will thank me later. I promise it really is that good.